All right, rooting and jailbreaking. Both of these remove the manufacturer's imposed um, limitations or restrictions. All right, rooting is an Android term. Jailbreaking is an iPhone term. They're both the same thing, All right? When you root or jailbreak, you break out of the jail, which is actually based on Linux's true jailing, which means you're restricted on what areas of the file system you can access, or you're getting root privilege. They're both the same, same concept. Removing all restrictions, having complete unrestricted access to the device. Jailbreaking actually comes in a couple different flavors. Rooting is generally all or nothing. There's typically one or two exploits for jailbreaking any single version of iOS and handsets. With Android, with all the different distros and different manufacturers, there's all sorts of root methods out there. And I've gone through a complete firmware load from a sideload location to Kingo for Kingo root to slide to jailbreak, varying degrees of difficulty in removing restrictions on my iOS devices and Android devices over the years. I've still got a Motorola Zoom somewhere that's a glorified alarm clock. That thing was a beast to root, but it was one of the first rooted Android devices I ever had, so I was kind of like a dog with a bone on that one. All right, carrier unlocking. All right, the, the patch kernel is a, is, a, is a product of jailbreaking, but the kernel, when you patch it, you're actually hooking the bootloader process, you're exploiting it, and then you patch the kernel to give you low-level access. If you have to re-jailbreak it every time you reboot it, that's referred to as a tethered jailbreak. Again, untethered means it survives a reboot. All right, carrier unlocking. There are restrictions when you purchase a handset as to what network it can be used on. Carrier unlocking allows you to use it on other networks. So provided it uses the same, uh, same radio frequencies, you could use T-Mobile to Verizon or whatever the case may be. All right, risks to enterprise management. When you remove the restrictions, not only do you remove the restrictions for the user, you remove the restrictions for malware. So when malware gets installed on your device, it also has root access. That's bad, bad mojo. If you've got a rooted, compromised device inside the enterprise, that makes for disaster. So you should always completely forbid and restrict any sort of jailbreaking or rooting. Those are fairly easy things to check for when you're using some sort of mobile device management software. There's a couple quick checks you can do to look for specific binaries or what permissions are applied in the file system. All right, so that's gonna wrap up our overview of mobile device management. How are we doing with that? Any questions?